Hey everybody, welcome back to my workshop. I'm V, and today's video I thought we would show the techniques that I learned over the last two or three years on how to weather one of your walls on your structure. Now, I have a bunch of the pieces laid out and I have one uh, I already stained this way we can get right to putting on the paint and then I left one blank um, this way we can show the different techniques on the wall uh, techniques I learned like I said from Jason Jensen mostly uh, really 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 good teacher good craftsman and James A. Powell is another one that I learned a few different techniques from another really really good guy um, he's James A. Powell I believe on YouTube and Jason Jensen trains and you could check those guys out a um, lot of fun to watch and learned a lot of what I do today from those two gentlemen so all of these pieces that we have, have laid out are all laser cut by me laid out designed and what it is is this structure right here now what I do is I search around the different manufacturers and I find something that I like and I tweak it and make it my own change the name make it something completely different uh, maybe move around a couple of pieces add a couple of pieces you know so forth like that so basically this is what we're gonna we're gonna be building over the next two or three videos and we'll show the different steps on how we get there uh, I just really go by the picture itself and get the kind of scale we need for HO and you know just make a a simple drawing this way I know what to put into Inkscape is what I use to actually design the structure and uh, that's the floor plan and once I'm happy with what I have uh, then I start inputting all the measurements and stuff for each individual piece into Inkscape and then it goes to the laser which we're gonna cover we're gonna cover in a couple of videos down the road uh, start to finish with that okay so the different techniques they consist of a hobby saw this is a pounce wheel and you can get three I believe come in a pack from Excel yeah, small medium and large we use the the smallest one uh, I believe it's uh, under fifteen dollars for, for the three pack and it's by Excel and you could see the all the little teeth on the edge you know, what we use this for is to simulate nail holes if you want to do that on your particular structure uh, hopefully you could see the pattern of nail holes that are on here gives a nice effect uh, sometimes kind of gets lost when you start to put the paint on over the stain uh, but it's a nice effect though so that that's one technique um, the hobby saw is probably one of my favorites and that just consists of scraping each board individual and you wind up with a really nice weathered effect on the wall different spots naturally you want to stay 
toward the bottom of the wall because that's where most of the weathering is going to take place. It's usually from the middle down is what I like to do, mostly the corners. And then all the way down at the bottom is where you'll see a, you know, severe weathering. Another technique is a single edge razor blade. And what you would do is create a seam. Just press down lightly. And get underneath the board. And then lift it up. Now I like that, but sometimes when you finish doing what you're doing with the paint and the final coat and stuff it kind of gets lost sometimes yes sometimes no so what I like to do is maybe just take a piece of it off so it kind of looks like that now you could put it as much as you want on the wall depending on how weathered and beat up you want the wall to look or you want the entire structure to look nice technique I like it uh, I've been using it you know quite a bit quite a long time uh, you don't necessarily have to pick up a board you can just create a seam randomly around the wall like so and you could put as many as you want on there. Uh, another technique, rather than using the saw, or if you want to use it with the saw, uh, is something like this here, which is a, I forget what you call it, but you get it in a sculptor's kit in Michaels for clay. And yeah, I guess you could say it's a wire, it's a wire brush, but it's it, extremely stiff though. And you can go in one direction and it, it creates a nice effect. Little bit easier, I find, than the actual saw. So I don't know if you can get a good enough look at that there, but it kind of roughs it up nicely in conjunction with the saw. Now that's pretty much all I'm going to do as far as physically picking up boards and scraping so forth like that to any given wall on the structure. And again, like I said, you can put as much as you want or you don't have to put any at all. It, it's just a matter of preference on really what you're looking for. Me, I like to have extremely weathered type buildings and I'll do pretty much a fair amount on the lower half of the wall so that takes care of any kind of tool or anything like that that you want to use to get that kind of an effect all right and then you have a wall that's already stained now this particular building is going to be white with green trim uh, so you have your very inexpensive white craft paint and we'll, we'll just do this one wall there's two different techniques that you can use it's either a nice flat brush about a quarter of an inch maybe a little less it's actually uh, a number four. I find it's easier to do several boards at one time. This way it doesn't take forever to do one wall section. Uh, no thinning, nothing like that. Just put the, the white acrylic paint out. Now Painting is, when you're adding your color to the wall over the stain, it's the same principle 
as using the different tools and and stuff to get your weathering you're always toward the bottom of the wall the top is usually covered by an overhang and doesn't see too much weather so you you're generally going to be more heavier on top Now you could go back and add a little bit more here and there as you work your way down depending on what you're looking for. I like to hit a, a few boards at a time, it just looks more random and it starts to show all the imperfections in the wood. I don't put too much paint on. I just put enough that's that's going to give me the kind of coverage that I want. I'll start in different spots and just work my way toward the edge. <coughs> Excuse me. nice relaxing simple technique and when we get down to the bottom it's going to be much much lighter and you get into more of a dry brushing technique down at the bottom As it starts to run out of paint, when you get closest to the bottom, it starts to give you a, a really nice effect because you already weathered it with a blade or the saw or the wire brush and it really starts to, to show what you did. Okay, that's good for now. I want to show you another technique that I learned from James Powell that you can add a nice little effect on the bottom of the wall before you, you continue with the white. And what this is is just a, an alcohol-based stain that I made with India ink. A little ton of India ink uh, is in here, and I use 99% um, alcohol in this here and what it does is he he showed you how the capillary action works on wood and uh, gives you a really really nice effect and again you use a, a flat brush flat brushes work really good for this technique very little I put very little on the brush and let me get a little closer here for you guys. What happens is, is when you touch the corner, the capillary action pulls the India ink in. And it gives you a really, really nice effect down at the bottom of the wall. You know, or if you want to go up a little bit higher on the edge and stuff like that, you can do that also. So again, you could just move it down and you get a really nice effect. I use this quite a lot. Just a small amount and it flows in nicely. And you get a really 
You get a really nice effect before you put your paint on. Now it's 99% alcohol based so it dries super quick. Just clean my brush. Okay. Now, when you're down at the bottom, you want to go as light as you can. And it gives you a really nice look. Just a little bit of paint, but not really a, a, I don't want to say dry brush because it's the brush is not completely dry to where there's only a very little bit of paint on it, but just enough to say it's there. And you take a look at it if you're happy with it, then you're done. If you want to just grab a little bit more paint and maybe just get a couple of more areas up on top. Which is normally what I do. Because I just take a look and see what it looks like or how it's coming out as I move my way down. And you just add some here and there okay I'm happy with that that's what it looks like all finished nice weathered beat up looking okay all right now, if I didn't want to use the brush, then I would just use a small piece of sponge. I don't have one at the bench right now to show you. Um, but basically, it's just a piece of grout sponge from Home Depot or Lowe's. And you just rip a piece off and, you know, dab it in your paint and then you can hit different spots of the wall and it gives a nice chipping effect um, I like the brush technique the best I think it gives it the the most realistic look and there's a new technique that James A. Powell um, got from another gentleman and he put it on his uh, YouTube channel and it's a mineral spirits chipping effect which I haven't done yet, but I think maybe we'll uh, we'll do that one together in a video. And it, it really, really gives you a real nice effect using a piece of scotch tape and your acrylic paint. So we'll get into that later on. So those are the two types that I use to apply the color to the wall and get the kind of effect that I'm looking for. And that's it. Now I'll do the, the same thing with this one. Is I'll add the stain, let the stain dry, and then go ahead and use the, the same technique I used here for all the other walls, obviously. And then that's it. Okay. Thank you for watching. I hope you picked up a few tips here and there would be nice um, if you like leave a comment I love to receive comments I think they're, they're awesome and enjoy the rest of your day stay motivated of course and have fun doing what you're doing bye now